Hello, 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 hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. My name is Sayyam and welcome back to the channel. Right today, we are going to solve this interesting problem of maximum rectangle. Uh, this problem, I am 100% sure you saw this problem because it's a very standard problem. It's a very, very, very old. It's 85 problem. I'm wondering what is the first problem. Do let me know in the comments what is the first problem in the read code. I will also check it out. But okay, this is the one of the most famous problems. It's a hard problem, I think, but it's no more hard because we have solved it many, 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 many times. So, yes. but if you're still stuck because you are remembering the ideas, I always say don't remember the ideas. Okay, okay, just mug up and something like that. Don't mug up the solutions. Try to find out the pattern. Can you solve this question now? If you have enough knowledge, you've already solved also. Think. Don't say, oh, I don't remember. Uh, uh, just let's see the solution. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Try to think again from the first principles. How would you approach this problem? What are the things you have to exclude? Oh, it, it, this approach, why? It does not work. Because this will make you a better programmer. Okay. Uh, with that note, let's get started with the video. Rows and columns, it's a binary matrix filled with zeros and ones. Find the largest rectangle containing only ones and return its area. What does the problem say? You're given with a rectangle. We're given with a rectangle. You have to find the rectangle with the largest area. And surprisingly, yes, this is the largest area. Six. Of all ones. Okay. Okay. Perfect. 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 Now let's try to think about that. Okay. What we can do? One idea that people can think. First, let's try to see the constraints. What does the constraint say? I think I, if I remember correctly, n is 500. Okay. n is 500, it might be 1000 also. But okay, I think n is 500. That means, uh, okay, that is interesting. n is 500. Hmm. What we can do? Okay. We'll see that it does not give out direct hint. But okay. First approach, what, what my, uh, comes to my mind is recursion that we can do something oh let's say we are standing here and then we go to right we go to down something like that but there is a problem this problem would have been changed if it is a maximum square problem remember that interesting thing is that okay because there is a constraint on this in maximal square we know that what we know that this side and this side will be same this side this side and this thing will be same so we can do something and apply the recursive call and maybe optimize with dp but here the problem is both the sides are not the same both the sides are not the same that means we don't know when to stop and like how to form the rectangle because it could form like this also something a random figure it can form but we don't want that we don't want that so it is a problem okay then uh, we leave this approach many people may think of the approach of uh, you can say a BFS that you can find the maximum island problem that, okay, you can just iterate over all the ones and find the maximum area. But wait, it is not a rectangle. It does not guarantee that will be a rectangle. Uh, right, same. That is also a matter of concern. So BFS also does not work. Mm. Okay. Now what, what next? Does a greedy idea exist? Does a greedy idea exist? A uh, greedy, you say that if you start, because obviously there will be a starting point and the ending point of a rectangle, right? Uh, can we try that? So what we need for the greedy idea, for a IJ pair, we require this, and a KL pair require this. Yes, we can do this. But the time complexity, does it allow? Like we can fix four coordinates, the top coordinate and the diagonal coordinate, like, well, like top uh, bottom top uh, uh, these diagonal coordinates we can fix up coordinates and then we can find it it should exist all ones should be there all ones should be there okay okay this could work this could work because we fix the diagonal coordinates we can iterate between these coordinates and we can check oh whether there exist all ones in these between all these coordinates if it does we can do that, but the time complexity would have been of n to the power 4. But that won't allow us. That won't allow us. Cool. So this is how you approach a problem. 
don't see the solution directly oh, this is the way but why it comes it could be understand and appreciate it okay, this is the solution this works perfect 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 so let's try to observe something okay how we reach that intuition so what we can see here is hmm, many of the people may have seen this pillars let's try to see okay what is happening actually is happening is uh this is some pillars are forming some pillars some pillars are forming okay this is a pillar is forming hmm. pillars is sort of a rectangle it's a sort of rectangle so if you remember a problem now i will just introduce the problem that maximum area in histogram in that problem that that is the standard problem and that might be prerequisite for this but okay we should understand it why we reach here why it is important if you remember that problem there were some pillars like this like this like this okay and then we have to find out the maximum area of the histogram but now the maximum area we would calculate like this right so we are standing here we are start let's say this is standing here so this might be the area because everyone should be surrounded this might be the area this might be the area you can uh, think about it should be uh, like not smaller uh, okay, actually here till here you can get it because all of them you can get it so the idea was very simple there that you are standing on a pillar you are standing on a pillar you check your next smaller you check your next smaller and you check your previous smaller you check your previous smaller and since you cannot include both the coordinates because both are smaller coordinates the heights will be smaller than the current coordinates so you cannot pick that so you obviously pick one index before one index because and form the sort of a rectangle here there itself you form the rectangle and this is the maximal rectangle we can talking about like this is the rectangle so can we leverage this idea to this problem can we think about it now let's try to understand that how we can think about this so what we can think of is okay so what we have to do we have to form some kind of rectangles but here there is no you can say heights are there there is only zeros and ones how we can consider height now that is the beauty of concept applying to a new problem it's beautiful problem literally trust me it's a very good problem now try to observe it okay Like let's try to understand every level as a base of the histogram. Let's say we start with here. Or whether if it is a zero, there could not be height. Right? It could not be height. So we will maintain the zero. Like there's nothing is there. It is a one. It is a height. It is a zero. It cannot be a height. Zero no height. One there is a height. Perfect. 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 Now actually what is happening? It is forming like this. This. Then this. 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 this this okay perfect now we will calculate the uh, using this our maximum area function of the maximum area of the histogram problem we'll solve that question first and we'll using these uh, the height we can solve the problem perfect yes we can let's say the answer we got is one because there's the maximum area you can getting is one only right this one from the first level now we move to the next level we move to the next level understand that remember that understand that what is happening okay this is happening now what happens you go above so here it will become like this yes now there you and you should understand that that this one this one understand that it was zero initially now it becomes one so you can say that it have become a one a new base has been changed now you can say that it could be continued or you can say here there is a break if you encounter a zero the building got collapsed and you have to maintain at zero we'll see that here also you can say that you got something like this okay uh, uh this is like okay this is one already was there there is no gap actually let me just make it more clear okay this okay no i'm right this will be like this now this becomes 1 1 so this also becomes 2 understand that and here it becomes 1 yes this is the new height this is the new heights we got okay this is 2 this is 1 this is 1 this is 2 this is 
Now what is the maximum rectangle you can find? Again we can solve it. Again we can solve it, and we found out the area to be maximum to be. You can say that uh, it's like one one one, and it's like one one uh one 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 one. So you can say four is the maximum answer you can get so from here. Don't think about from here. Think you can see here the result, but you can compute the answer from here itself. So answer could be uh four at max. You can find four. Okay. Let's try to move ahead. Let's try to move ahead. If we go further, we can make one more. We can make one more level because still it is continuous. Now here it is very important. You got a zero. Once you have a building, then you got a zero. That means what? You cannot continue. You cannot continue with this building. You cannot because you got a zero. The continuity breaks. You have to make this as a zero. It was vanished. Here you can be made to. No problem. Here it can be made to three, three. It can be made to three, and here also it made to two. So what happens eventually was what happens eventually. Your new buildings will look like three, empty, two, uh, three, and two. Right. This happens. Very very important. Now if we move ahead. We move ahead. At the last, we got one more. Let's try to calculate first from the here itself. Like, what is the maximum we are getting? Now understand that this is what three, this is what two. The maximum you can get the from the histogram area was six. Perfect. Now every level, like when we are increasing the level by level, we are maintaining a maximum variable. What is the maximum area can get? Like we don't know from which we will get the maximum, but we will keep doing that. And every time we call the function, every time we call the function, perfect. Now let's try to move forward. If we move forward, that this becomes one more level up, right? It becomes four. This becomes zero again. There's nothing here in the second one. Again, this becomes one. This becomes one. Increase the level. You can increase the level. Okay. Uh, uh wait. This was three, right? Uh, this was four. Uh, this was two initially. Uh, this becomes three actually. Oh, sorry. This one increases. My bad. This one increases, not this one. This one not increase. Yeah. And then remember that other two are zeros. Now these will be vanished. These remaining will be vanished. So it will becomes like this. Now, again, you need to compute the area. Maximum you can get is four. And the maximum overall global maximum you got as six. So what the idea? Okay. Using the maximum area histogram problem, we can solve this function. So idea is quite simple. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna change the base levels, base levels every time. Levels, or you can say eleven. Okay. What we are essentially doing is we are building the heights. And if you have a continuous height, that is perfectly fine. We'll gonna increase from the previous uh, height which we got. But if we encounter a zero in the height, we have to make it zero because we cannot carry it forward. We cannot carry it forward, right? And don't worry about the previous. Previous, uh, the whatever is the maximum we have already computed, so we don't need to worry about that row. But if you have to consider the current row, and if it is zero, we cannot make it as the same height. Uh, you have to make it zero because at this level we are making the new height. It's like uh, you cannot use the prior height. Right, the base levels are gonna change. The base levels are gonna change. So, what is the idea? Is you can maintain two vectors, a prior vector and a next vector, or you can say curve vector. Prior contains the previous heights. And curve contains the current heights. Current heights. Current heights of the vector. Now, when we are initially, so you can make prev with the initial row, initial row of, or you can say last row of matrix. You can initialize initialize the prev with that. Now, what you can do for the curve part is. Now understand that if you encounter a one, you just add whatever you got in the previous row, right? Plus one. 
because it's gonna extend it's gonna extend but if you get a zero if you get a zero you cannot extend it you cannot extend it so there are two kind of cases but if you get a one perfect add with the whatever is the previous previous was there and whatever is the index plus one whatever index you are currently at otherwise if you got a zero then you have to make the curl of j to be zero because this cannot be extended further this cannot be extended further whatever is the prior one one let's say you got like this one one zero and like it's like one uh, zero one one understand that what is the maximum rectangle you can get from here the first level you considered okay you got only one area the answer could be one now you move forward you move forward you got a one and you got a two it's like the height like this one and two so you got what you got the answer as uh, two answer here like maximum area but when you go above understand that it will be like this and it will become zero because here when it becomes zero you cannot consider this level it has to be zero you cannot make it two 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 no if you make it two two the answer turns out to be four but understand that here nothing exists right as four area it because whenever it comes to a zero this level has to match this level has to you can say a new base height you can say that so whenever you get a zero you have to make that as zero itself so it will be like this two and zero and the answer would be two itself again so this is the overall idea you just maintain that and it, its remaining thing is the implementation problem so if you talk about this we have already see the diagram of this video let's try to see the code so that you can understand the things more better okay so here is the code so this is the code for the maximum area i hope you understand the maximum area in the histogram if you don't i will put the link of the video in the description you can check it out it's very simple okay it's not very difficult once you understood the maximum area of the histogram now let's try to understand that so what you have to maintain you have to maintain the pref and you have to maintain the curve okay and if i is not equals to zero what you gonna do uh, you gonna do this thing if you found a zero you have to set the current to be zero the height to be current to be zero and otherwise you have to include the previous height plus one you just concatenate you can con not concatenate you will add that to the previous height and add to one okay otherwise if it is the first true you just make the matrix itself right because this is the initial heights there is no prior heights so you maintain the pre thing now if i equals to equals to zero uh that it's just the change of cases that okay pre you can say that okay from the pre you calculate the area maximum area otherwise you calculate from the curve itself okay and whenever i is not equals to zero make previous equals to curve like you obviously gonna change your previous right it's pre curve and then you wanna swap these variables again and again and again and again and then finally at every level you gonna keep on adding row one by one by one by one by one by one by one, by one. And then you finally got your answer as a maxi variable, right? I hope you understood it. Like what is happening, what is the things changing, and uh, like how we are able to solve the problem. Right? Uh, this is a very detailed intuition that what I thought about this problem. And yeah, the time complexity and the space complexity. Let's try to discuss. So the time complexity of the maximum area is O of n. Okay. And since you are iterating here on every row and every column, so it's like O of n into m into O of n. m because every row is the time complexity. It's like O of n m square is the time complexity, and the space complexity is O of m. Okay. So I hope you understood something new and learned something out of this video. Make sure you to subscribe and like the video. We'll see you in the next video. Then till then, keep learning. Goodbye.